Hello everyone, this is Jean-Michel. Welcome to our last video on multimedia APIs and their use with Qt. In this video, we are going to investigate FFmpeg, also known as libav, and a library that wraps it in a way that makes it very easy to use within Qt, Qt AV. So what about FFmpeg? We've already seen it a few times, for instance, in our previous videos about VLC and MPV, both VLC and MPV can use FFmpeg for video decoding and sometimes hardware acceleration too. So FFmpeg is an old, well-known C library, C99, which implements a lot of various codecs for encoding and decoding all kinds of media types. As such, it is harder to use as a library than the other libraries that we saw earlier, there isn't any kind of simple player object, but we will quickly look around the examples that show how to build your own media player from it. So, about the license, FMPEG is special in the sense that it depends on the codecs that are enabled. Some codecs are available under LGPL, some other codecs require GPL, so they won't be able to be used under proprietary software. The community is Kinda active, Kinda large, there are often new FMPEG updates, and um, it is fairly powerful. It allows to do a lot of decoding. For instance, it is used in Google Chrome or that kind of software for decoding across all platforms. It works on Mac, Windows, Linux, even if for the longest time, due to lack of uh, compiler support for C99 in Visual Studio, it was harder to use under Microsoft Windows. But these days are now past. So let's look at some source code examples. Um, the FFmpeg repository and the uh, tarball archive contains a doc folder with examples. And we can look, for instance, at the decode video example, which is the very basic operation mode of FFmpeg. And as we can see, it is only plain old C with fban, fwrite, blah, blah, not C++. The main function declares a fair amount of um, global, well, kinda context-like variables. And we can see all the initialization calls to also create various libav structures. And once we have set up everything, loaded the codec, that kind of thing, then we can start decoding simply in a loop. So this is very close to the middle is very, very, you have to write your own decoding algorithms. On one hand, it's harder. On the other hand, this gives you a lot of power on what you, how you want to do things. So if you want to check our decode function here, we can see two important calls, send packet and receive frame. These two calls are interesting because in this example, they are in the same function, but they can actually be in separate threads. So one thread can enqueue a decoding request and the other the receiving thread will receive it once everything is done and that's all it's only yes, not even 200 lines of code to decode a video some useful tools come with fmpeg for instance ffplay is a very simple uh, media player so i will as always use my test video so you can see it playing and also ffprobe is useful as it shows all the codecs that are used in a video file so it's very useful if you want to know what is a video file about uh, what kind of codec has been used what are the codec parameters ffprobe this command can tell you everything about it but this doesn't tell us how to use it from Qt. so now that we've looked a bit at how fmpeg looks and works we can look at the Qt av library which wraps it in a nice API usable from Qt. So um, Qt AV is available on GitHub. And however, it is important to know that it is available under both LGPL 2.1 and GPL 3, um, like if FMPEG, basically. Some parts of Qt AV are only available under GPL 3. So the nice thing is that it provides a lot of examples. Um, for instance, we can look at uh, our simple player example, which is only a few
few, not even uh, 100, 200 lines, and is the most basic video player you can imagine. Well, it uses Qt widgets. You can select, as always, a video file and control playback, that kind of thing. And it uses very simple object, AV player uh, and video output. So AV player does all the decoding and video output is a surface. So the nice thing with Qt AV is that it, it integrates with the whole of Qt. You can, it, it provides widgets for, well, Q widgets. It provides Qt quick integration. It provides Q graphics scene and Q graphics item integration if you have a Q graphics scene based software. So it is extremely versatile and gives access to most of eBayV, FFmpeg's API. We can look at kind of more complex examples. For instance, the shader example um, applies uh, various filters. So where is it? Uh, shader. Not this example. Just the filter. And we need to pass it a file as argument. Uh, Okay, so here, as you can see, it applies a simple filter on the video output. And that is done quite simply. It, it provides an API where it just sets a um, shader and you can set it like that. So now let's look at a QML example for Qt AV. So uh, the QML example is a full-blown media player with some interesting capabilities. So um, of course there is some setup code, but what matters is our main.qml. We have a video output two and a media player object. So these objects aren't Qt multimedia objects. They come from Qt AV. And as you can see, they support much more API that uh, Qt multimedia, they support subtitles. Uh, there is a lot of properties that are accessible. We can check the properties in the QML bindings, for instance, in QML AV player. As you can see, there is a whole lot of properties available on these media player objects. The filters that you can apply to sound, to video, so you can build easily pretty powerful media players, much more than simple video outputs. But complete media player software are clearly doable with Qt AV. And uh, if we open it, it looks like that. Um, and we can see, for instance, so all the codec information that is sourced from FMPEG, the kind of pixel format. Uh, we can adjust some effects. Uh, so we don't have subtitles, but as you can see, it's kind of extensive. And so all of this it uses FMPEG in the backend. And if you want, you can always um, go back to using FMPEG directly. But the Qt AV API is extensive enough that this shouldn't be needed very often. So that is it for this video series. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed watching it. And if you have any question, please keep in touch with Keda. Thanks, this was Jean-Michel.